This video is a sequel to my first ever anime video when I was trying to get behind the idea of properly talking about anime with my brain and my heart and actually get something across. No, don't don't leave just yet. You don't have to watch that video, but if you do, come back to this one and tell me what you thought in the comments. Hell, double comment on this one if you want. I'd love to hear what you think. And hey, if you want to see more videos like this, maybe leave a like and subscribe to the channel to never miss another upload. It helps way more than you know. It's not like if we get wasted in here, we disappear forever, right? Uh, besides, I have three lives. Bottom tier character Tomozaki Second Stage came out this year to the fanfare of quite possibly nobody, since I didn't quite see people talking about it like they did other shows of its type, and maybe it's because fandom hype dies down and becomes a slow burn. I definitely still like the series' first animated endeavor, but that's besides the point. The second season is something I never really expected, since the first one capped off pretty nicely as an advertisement for the original medium, but I guess it was given a second chance to draw in more people, and we're here with the same cast, new issues, new drama, new everything. For those that are here, in case you need it or are just watching this video, first of all, thank you. Second, I'm just gonna refresh your brain on what went down in the original series without going too deep into it. The titular character, Tomozaki, is an absolute fucking loser. He does not take care of himself, barely cares for his appearance, his family is outwardly disgusted by him, and is overall not an attractive person. His one claim to any sort of fame is being the number one Japanese player in this universe's equivalent of Super Smash Bros. He eventually meets up with the one person who rivals him, number two, which just so happens to be one of the most popular girls in his school. She is immediately disappointed in him, and he goes off on some incel-type shit about how she was gifted her everything, and he had nothing. Understandably taking offense to this, she proves that she meticulously calculates her outward appearance, physically and personably, to her advantage, and then makes it her mission to elevate this guy from drowning in Axe body spray to tastefully using Scentbird who isn't sponsoring this video, I just kinda like their product. Dude, it came in this little drawstring bag, I love it. The major conflict in this series is generally just the struggle of someone restructuring their life by utilizing the logic of a video game in order to properly process the whole thing. I, for one, as an autistic king, kinda jive with that. It's embarrassing to say, but I've definitely used that sort of logic in order to explain how my brain works sometimes. The most important thing that I found issue with was this overemphasis on romance, which is weird coming from me, I know, but the main heroine of the series had this bug in her about it, stating that it was necessary for growth, and yet she didn't explain why. It made no sense to me. I personally didn't understand why it caused a falling out, but all was okay in the end, and I could see sparks fly between the main character and the main heroine. No matter how things end up, even on the unlikely chance that these two become a romantic pair, I think their friendship, despite being built upon mentoring at the beginning, is engaging to watch, and that's what kept me interested in the second season. With most of the lessons being passed through to Tomozaki by this point in time, Hinami apologizes for enforcing such an inane requirement of a confession without meaning, and pivots to a couple of different points. One still involves romance, but that's more apparent throughout the actual character interactions throughout the second season. One thing I like is that by the start, two characters have begun to date in earnest, those being the quote-unquote original antagonist and this girl, Yuzu. She had previously shown interest in him, but they finally got together after Tomozaki taught her how to actually play Smash Bros on a somewhat competitive level. The thing I really like is that things are progressing, as they should in any story, and there actually is an attempt at addressing a problem I had in the first season. I can't fault a series for taking time later in its overall story to delve into other characters and their personalities and how they shape up along with the rest of the cast. I can fault the first season of the anime for placing seemingly equal importance on one character, and then not following up with that. Chief complaint I had of this was that out of the girls featured in the opening of the series, aka the ones you'd expect to be the most important to the story being told thanks to years of watching anime, Tama was barely utilized. We don't understand much about her, and she's really only there as a vehicle to talk about Minami, which is fine if she was there for that purpose and there were other characters like that, but there aren't. For that reason, Tama's entire story arc so far was the front load of the second season, and I put emphasis on load because it's like half of the damn show. I appreciate it, not for nothing. I like how it relates to the fallout of characters getting into relationships, how things change, and how meaningful it can be when you're a bunch of high schoolers and your emotions are running at a high. I feel like I say this every time I talk about an anime that features high schoolers, but I feel like I have to say it. I may not remember much of the actual events, but I remember the emotions, and they meant everything to me back then. So I imagine that, to these characters, 
they're feeling it too. The part of this that I think is interesting is how, in a sense, this part of the anime, and really all parts of the story that seem to focus on interpersonal drama, are really about feeding into Tomozaki's growth as a person. Atama literally asks how Tomozaki made such a turnaround, and without saying who caused it, eventually teaches her how to reorganize her way of thinking and come out on top of a conflict. This comes at the cost of alienating Hinami from the discussion because her methods are purely selfish, and almost manipulative in a sense. It's an interesting thing to see her character be portrayed as manipulative and almost evil. Antagonistic is the better word, because for lack of a better way of explaining things, that's what she's outwardly doing. She puts on a lot of facade, the only person to really see it being Tomozaki. She coaches him in also putting on a mask, literally at the beginning, but also figuratively. Manipulating situations to his advantage, controlling the room to be firmly about him. She's ultimately coming from a good place, but it's still really engaging to watch how she's able to use the skills she's trying to teach to Tomozaki, but in a purely selfish way. But maybe I'm reading too much into it. Regardless, this part of the story- can I even call it an arc? This part of the story really addresses the fact that I thought Tama was left out, and not for nothing, I like that a lot. The only thing I didn't really like was the overall length, and yet I powered through it. It felt drawn out until the end when she pulls together a fake Napoleon complex and makes a joke out of it. I could have gone without it, but maybe I'm just crazy. I liked seeing how she was treated next to characters we already know and love, those being her best friends in Hinami and Minami. If you haven't, I want you to go watch the show, which is why I'm not saying too much, but you get the gist. Most importantly of all, I like how this second season expands on the relationships already formed from the first season. The first season had this really cheeky forced romantic moment where Tomozaki and Hinami are in each other's arms and the tension, genuinely, it feels like it could be cut with a knife. They get the same kind of tense moment, but in a different way when it comes to Minami's burgeoning crush on Tomozaki, when she does her normal thing of being physically affectionate with a headbutt while saying something dumb, calls him sturdy, and look at this framing. I actually like that she's arguably the person who's most likely to develop a crush on him, because throughout the series, she spends quite a lot of time at him. She spends quite a lot of time at him? <laughs> I wrote that with him, fuck. I actually like that she's arguably the person who's most likely to develop a crush on him, because throughout the series, she spends quite a lot of time with him. This line, this one about respect, that one hit me like a truck. I think it's natural that through her admiration of his skills and the genuine conversations they have with each other during the evenings and at school, it's pretty expected of her to want to see more of his own vulnerable side and be vulnerable herself. I like Minami a lot. She's best girl. I think it's plenty evident that Tomozaki isn't a bad-looking guy after his serious makeover, not helped by the fact that he keeps up the appearance, at least for himself, after making up with Hinami at the end of the series. Even before this, I like how it's pretty obvious that Yuzu wouldn't have gotten together with her boyfriend if it weren't for Tomozaki's admittedly specialized skill set. Hell, I like that the very clear relationship growing between Fuka and Tomozaki is still treated with the same respect as always. Friends who have gone out with each other and share a vested interest in literature, which funnels into the second major story of the anime, which surrounds a culture festival. You know how it goes. Sure, it's pretty clear even to my dumbass that Fuka likes the guy, but she also just likes talking to him, and man do I love that. I like these two. This is something from the first season, but I like how consistent that Tomozaki is named across the series from his friends. Minami calls him Brain because he's a genuinely smart guy. Takei calls him Army Boy because, well... Ah! Ah! Yes! This is my rifle, this is my gun, this is for fighting, this is for fun! What the fuck kind of cliffs am I putting in these episodes, bruv? Though, maybe I'm just hearing it wrong, but the Japanese sounds like he's saying puppy rather than army boy, but I have very little knowledge of Japanese as a language. The main thing that catches me off guard, and some of the characters, is Mizusawa intentionally calling him by his first name with no honorifics. It started in the last season, and oh boy, did it come out in two ways. It's a sign of love of all sorts. Or, it can be seen as a sign of disrespect, and I think Mizusawa means it both ways. The way it's delivered, and yet the air of respect from both characters toward each other. 
Mizusawa is probably the guy closest to Tomozaki in all of this, mainly because one sees the other as a rival of sorts, but that's besides the point. There's a touching scene in Episode 8 that really shows how impressed Mizusawa is at Tomozaki's growth as a person, someone who made rapid change on themselves for the better, because maybe everyone low-key saw him as a slouching loser and that wasn't a good look. I think one thing that I straight up don't like, is still, is this insistence from Hinami that Tomazaki has to choose a girl, or rather, girls, that he wants to pursue in a romantic sense. Maybe it's because I'm over it as an adult with bills, please help me out because I need to eat, but I don't think I've ever placed such an importance on getting a girlfriend in my life. Don't get me wrong, I wanted one, but I was just a guy at school. I had my friends, I was a bit weird, but even the normal people in my friend group weren't out there doing more than calling girls cute and passing during lunch, and then we'd proceed to play Magic the Gathering. O okay, maybe I wasn't normal. I grew up and started playing shit-ass games like Final Fantasy XIV, but the point stands! I don't like that Hinami's prime goal is getting this guy a girlfriend. Like, she puts herself on the table, but I don't think she meant that. And hell, during one of their talks, she calls herself a sore loser, rapping back on her motivation for doing this in the first place. Maybe I just don't understand. That's fine. I'm eight years out of high school, maybe I'm just old. I can never find a reason for insistence on romantic partners being the only thing that makes you a normal person, or somebody worthwhile. The pursuit, or the want of being pursued, is normal, but it's the reliance on it to be considered normal and successful is what puts me off. And I'm a straight guy. Someone's favorite, in fact. That's my problem with the series from a major standpoint. I don't think that a reliance on that sort of thing, especially from a character who doesn't have any outward romantic interest despite having all of the pieces lined up to have a boyfriend, can be the one espousing the ideal of going after women and dating them and blah blah blah. I understand that this is a romance anime, it's part of the drama, and it's part of the reason I, and many others, are watching. There comes a point, however, where the chemistry from the characters is enough to sell me on their friendship and potential partnership. Why does there need to be an external motivating factor such as being normal? Isn't our main character actively making strides in being a likable person enough? I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks that a major theme of this series is a buildup of self-esteem and confidence in yourself, and making yourself more attractive in more ways than just physically. Mizusawa says it, attractive people attract people. And even though I myself have been described as ugly by even obscure films like the 1998 re-release of Grease featuring John Travolta, wait, that was re-released in 98? Oh, no wonder I had a VHS of it. The point is that over the years of my building self-confidence, I've seen more people want to be around me because I've made strides to be better about myself. I've even made a little promise to a certain pink rabbit, who will not be named explicitly here, that I would work better on talking bad about myself because, shit, I'm their friend. I shouldn't be talking bad about that guy. Fundamentally, at the same time, I realize that due to the nature of what this show is about, Romantic drama is kind of the point, and the focus, and what could spark some character growth. I'm not immune to that thing being satisfying in a story that I'm reading, but I am saying that, damn, I wish sometimes that a story would treat having friends as satisfying as having a romantic partner. It's why, despite the elements of romance being there, I thought it was a good message in 2.5D Seduction that Lelisa and Okumura were better as non-romantic partners, rather than a boyfriend and girlfriend. The question at the end of the day is this. Do I think that this is a good second season? Absolutely. Do I recommend you watch the whole series? Hell yeah, I do. I had a grand old time with this, and I suspect if you're anything like me, you're gonna have one too. I like seeing a character choose growth as a person, because it means the best for them, and it helps bring out the best in others around them. And I get the strange feeling that you can get behind that too. With all that said, my name is Sonata. Thank you for watching. <laughs>